G'day everyone and welcome back to our paranormal world. In this video, we're going to have a look at an interesting case of a hex placed by a criminal in 1948, which seemingly claimed the lives of six men. The Jake Bird Hex. Do you believe in curses or hexes? Some say the Kennedy family was cursed and certainly that family has suffered a lot of tragedy over the years. But is that the result of a curse? Many believe curses and hexes are very real. Whether they are the product of focused witchcraft or voodoo or the utterance of a powerful mind or simply the power of suggestion or mere coincidence is up for debate. But the case of the Jake Bird Hex from the 1940s still captures the imagination of many and has people scratching their heads to this day. You may not have heard of Jake Bird. Up until the 1970s though, he was in fact considered the United States most prolific serial killer, having confessed to over 40 murders across the country. Born in December 1901, Jake was a transient from Louisiana and no record exists of where he spent his childhood years and he claimed he couldn't remember. He worked on the railways doing manual labour and this job took him from town to town and state to state. Apparently he never married and by his own estimate he had spent at least 15 years of his life incarcerated for various crimes, ranging from petty theft right through to assault and attempted murder. In October 1947, Jake Bird was found to have entered the home of 53-year-old widow Bertha Clutt, who shared the home with her 17-year-old daughter Beverly in Tacoma, Washington. He entered the home through a rear door and claimed he was looking to burglarise the home for money to buy shoes. However, he was armed with an axe. He stole $1.50 from Bertha's purse and said he was in the process of leaving the home when he found Bertha standing behind him. She screamed and he bludgeoned her with the axe. Her daughter Beverly rushed to her mother's room but encountered Bird, who then turned the axe on Beverly, killing her also. Neighbours, alerted by the commotion, contacted police and they arrived quickly and gave chase to Bird, who they say attempted to escape on foot through the neighbourhood. After they placed Bird under arrest and viewed the crime scene, which was as gruesome as you imagine a double axe murder to be, the arresting officers viciously beat Bird until he begged for his life. At trial, one of the officers made a statement detailing his regret for his loss of temper after viewing the scene in the Clut home. Jake Bird's trial was not a lengthy matter. He was noted to being covered in blood and he confessed while in custody, although he later recanted this confession, saying it was beaten out of him by law enforcement officers. The court considered this an open and shut case and he was quickly sentenced to death by hanging. At the conclusion of the trial, Jake Bird was allowed to make a statement. He spoke for around 20 minutes, stating that his request to represent himself had been denied and that his own lawyers were against him. Indeed, his defence attorney had asked to be relieved of his assignment, stating that my heart does not beat in sympathy for this man who fixes his life as more important than that of others. However, he had been ordered by the court to finish the trial and he did so. Jake ended his speech in court with the following statement. I'm putting the hex of Jake Bird on all of you who had anything to do with my being punished. Mark my words, 
you will die before I do. His execution was initially scheduled for the 16th of January 1948, but he soon began to claim he had committed 44 other murders across the country, which he was willing to assist police with solving. The Washington governor granted a 60-day reprieve in order for these claims to be investigated, and police from many states interviewed Bird. In the course of these interviews, 11 murders were substantiated and attributed to Jake Bird. On a further 33 murders, Bird was found to be knowledgeable enough that he was considered a prime suspect. In addition to the Washington State murders, it was found that Bird was responsible for murders in Florida, Illinois, Iowa, Kansas, Kentucky, Michigan, Nebraska, Ohio, Oklahoma, South Dakota, and Wisconsin. The victims were mostly women who had been raped and murdered with an ax or a hatchet. During this time, Jake Bird and his attorney lodged appeals for retrials to state and federal courts. However, all of them were denied. But it isn't Jake Bird's crimes or his ultimate death by hanging which cements his story in the annals of history. Rather, it is his hex. His final remark that those involved would die before him soon came true in the most astonishing fashion. Less than a month after his sentencing, the sentencing judge, Edward D. Hodge, died of a heart attack. A month after the death of the judge, a police officer involved with the case, Joe Carpatch, also suffered a heart attack and died. Ray Scott, the chief court clerk, died that same month also from heart failure. Within months, Police Lieutenant Sherman Lyons was also dead from a heart attack. And before the anniversary of his conviction and his sentencing, his attorney, James W. Selden, suffered a heart attack and died within minutes in his office. Only days before Bird's execution, Arthur Seward, a guard at the prison where Bird was being held, also experienced fatal heart failure. In all, six people in connection with Jake Bird's conviction and incarceration all succumbed to heart failure prior to Bird's sentence being carried out. Interestingly, many commentators believe Jake Bird was not guilty of this or the other crimes to which he confessed. Some postulate that the blood noticed on his clothes was his own from the beating he received at the hands of the arresting officers. He claimed his confession was extracted through further beatings from police officers and, of course, his attempts to recant this confession fell on deaf ears. Further, they suggest his agreement to assist police with their inquiries into other murders across the country were an attempt to buy himself time in order for his appeals to be heard. And while that seems like a counterintuitive strategy, perhaps it was simply an ill-considered tactic from a truly desperate man. On July 15, 1949, Jake Bird was taken to the gallows and 125 people came to watch that execution. He had written a note asking for forgiveness and the prison chaplain began to read the note aloud. He had barely commenced his reading though when the trapdoor on the gallows was sprung and Jake Bird was hanged. He was subsequently buried in the prison cemetery and his grave was marked only with his corrections identification number, 21520. In his last will and testament, Jake Bird had left all of his money, $6.15, to the attorney who filed his appeal applications. 
there is so much that is interesting about this case. Was Jake Bird even guilty of the crimes to which he confessed? And if so, can such a seemingly effective curse be placed by such an horrendously murderous guilty man? Were the deaths of those involved a result of this hex or just a strange series of unfortunate coincidences? Were the victims of this hex so filled with fear after the death of the judge that the stress caused their own heart failure? No one will ever know for sure and Jake Bird took all his secrets with him to the grave that day in 1949. Thank you so much for watching this video. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit the bell icon and click all notifications so you can stay up to date with all the paranormal content on this channel. I'll see you next time.